Syrian Arab Army and the Lebanese resistance established full control over mountains of Lipa in Qalamun, inflicting heavy losses on al-Nusra front terrorists. Four Saudi soldiers are killed in recent attacks. And the Food Expo concludes activities with wide participation of national companies working in the food industries. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Art Division in Damascus. Parliament Speaker Mohammad Jihad al Aham received Roberto Foyer, head of the delegation of the Alliance for Peace and Freedom in Europe. Mr. al Aham affirmed that Syria is subjected to an organized international terrorism with the aim of ending the Syrian resistance stand and the steadfastness of the Syrian people who are rallying behind their leadership in confront confronting terrorism. In turn, Foyer said that Syria is subjected to a conspiracy hatched by many states, including the U.S., Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, calling for combating terrorism before it's spread to Europe and other parts of the world. Syria urged the United Nations Security Council to take a prompt and decisive action against the Turkish government, whose actions against Syria are tantamount to aggression. Addressing two identical letters to the United Nations Security General and the United Nations Security Council Chief concerning recent reports in Turkish media about Turkish arms transfers to Syria uh, the F and Foreign and Expatriates Ministry, the Foreign and Expatriates Ministry said the UN and its counterterrorism committees must apply to the Turkish government to control its borders and stop training and supporting terrorist organizations. The Turkish daily uh, Jumhuriyet has recently published a news story, including photographs and a link to an online video which revealed large quantities of mortars, shells, grenade launchers, and ammunition hidden in a Turkish truck bound for Syria. Reports showing the, the Turkish support for terrorists, as revealed by the Turkish media, are only tip of the iceberg of the scope of the Turkish involvement in the current events, said the letters concluding. Concluding the letters, the ministry said that the silence over Turkey, Turkey's crimes is a tax support for terrorism, which will prolong the Syrian crisis and provides a cover for terror organizations that encourage them to commit more atrocious acts against Syrians. After the Turkish Jumhuriyet newspaper published an exclusive report which shows lorries belonging to the Turkish intelligence agency carrying weapons to Syria, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan threatened a journalist at one of the country's newspapers saying he will make him pay the highest price. The Jumhuriyet newspaper published a video showing what appears to be police officers inspecting a cargo on the back of three trucks belonging to Turkish state intelligence agency. This this follows a Reuters story last month which included witnesses reporting that they have seen trucks delivering arms to ISIL-held areas in Syria in 2013 and 2014. The allegations angered Erdogan, who told Turkey's public broadcaster TRT that the newspaper report was espionage and that he would not let this go without holding the newspaper accountable. The involvement of the Turkish government in smuggling weapons into Syria is thus exposed once again, showing Erdogan's regime deeply immersed in the conspiracy against the Syrian people. A unit of the Syrian army killed a number of Jabhat al-Nusra terrorists in Kafr Shams in the countryside of the southern Dara city. Later, an army unit killed six terrorists of the so-called Diwa al yarmouk among them non-Syrians, and destroyed three cars equipped with machine guns in Al-Kalak al-Sharqi neighborhood in Dara al-Balad. In Aleppo, units of the army and the armed forces killed a number of ISIS terrorists in that area surrounding the Air Force Academy. Destroying several of their dens and vehicles in Adan, Hayyan, Atin, and Al Mansura in the countryside of Aleppo province to the north of Syria. 
and in related context, a unit of the Syrian army and armed forces and the Lebanese resistance established full control over Jerud Flita in Qalamun, inflicting heavy losses on a Nusra Front terrorist earlier. The general command of the Syrian army and armed forces vowed that military operations will continue until full control is established over Qalamun mountainous region along Syria's borders with Lebanon. In a statement, the general command extolled the achievements of the armed forces in Qalamun, which it called which it said have dealt a debilitating blow to the Wahhabi project in the region and debunked its bankers. On the other side of the Syrian border, the Lebanese national resistance continued its advancement in Arsal Mountains, establishing full control over the Mount of Shbet al Qala as and part of a Zamrini crosspoint. Resistance sources said that scores of terrorists were eliminated during the operations. <laughs> Secretary General of Lebanon's Hezbollah, Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah, said that the achievements made in the past few days gave the Syrian Arab Army and the resistance the upper hand in Al Qalamun and Arsal areas. In a televised speech, Nasrallah said the element that speeded up the commencement of Al Qalamun battle was the direct attack by terrorists on army and resistance sites particularly the recent attack by Al-Qaeda of Shud Jabhat al-Nusra on areas in Yunin, Nahla and Arsal. He noted that ISIS and its project are being exploited by certain signs to protect it, fund it and buy oil from it with the goal of employing it as a bone in the battles taking place in the region. <coughs> The death toll from the two explosions that targeted a gathering for the People's Democratic Party in the Turkish city of Diyarbakir reached four, more, while more than 200 are wounded. A chairman of the party, Salah al-Din Dimitash, warned members of the party against taking any provocative acts. Member of the Turkish parliament, Altan Tan, held the Turkish government responsible for the two explosions, adding that the aim of such acts is to aggravate tension, spread terrorism and delay the elections. He stressed that the Turkish security agents were informed of the two explosions, but the government did not take any preemptive measures to prevent their occurrences. <coughs> Al Saud regime admitted the death of four Saudi soldiers during clashes that took place on the Saudi Yemeni borders. Sources in the so called coalition forces said that a captain in the Saudi National Guards was among the victims. The sources added that the clashes took place in Jizan and Najran, referring that the Saudi forces used artillery and Apache helicopters. <laughs> The first official rally for drift sport was organized in Damascus countryside at Zaman al Khair track with the participation of well known drivers. Zaman al Khair track in Damascus countryside. Witness yesterday the launching of the Syrian drifting competition for the first time in Syria. This competition was organized by the Ministry of Tourism in cooperation with the Syrian Cars Club. The added value of this event is that uh, the Syrian, especially this, uh, the Syrian news, that restored the life uh, to uh, nearby Damascus by creative and innovative uh, ideas uh, to this area after the, uh, our uh, soldiers um, uh, make this area safety. Uh, this activity is a very important uh, message to all the Syrians and outside, inside and outside of Syria that life will go on. Uh, we will go back to all kind of activities in Syria and all kind of uh, human and sport activities in Syria. Um, wherever we are, we are trying to do uh, uh, as much as we can to improve uh, our uh, sport. Uh, that's, that's our main goal. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to me to be here and uh, it was a really nice, uh, nice round for me. Uh, uh, some problems uh, in the car, but uh, finally it was a perfect round. And, uh, it was a nice event.
the club imposed certain rules and regulations related to the safety of the competitors, and there was a special committee for examining the cars before the start of the race. Drift race has a special regulations and the time is not considered an influential factor. With this, we reach the end of our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region, you can always visit our uh, website in English www.syriaonline.sy. Now, the latest business and market news with Nani Man, but after a short break. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Activities of the 11th session of the Food Exhibition Food Expo 2015 under the title of Our Hope is Big and Our Effort is Continued for Syria. At the Damascus Base, Damaros Hotel, the exhibition activities lasted from the 1st to the 3rd of June. More in the following report. Exhibition director of Delta Group uh, for company and business organizer of the exhibition, Ria Fashima, said that holding the exhibition in cooperation with the Arab Union for Food Industries and the Syrian Chambers of Commerce and Industry proves Syria's recovery and the confidence of its people in continued work and development. Uh, Ashima stressed uh, the necessity of the presence of food industries, companies and businessmen uh, for upgrading uh, the national economy and opening the doors before the national production to reach a competitive level. We are importing uh, food products uh, for Syrian markets. Um, our products are uh, good quality and, and affordable prices. Our services by land, uh, transport and sea freight and uh, air freight we can serve all uh, customers here in Syria and uh, Latakia port. The Food Expo has become an important landmark for the early recovery stage of the Syrian economy and for marketing the Syrian food industries and a chance for businessmen and specialists working in the food industries sector to meet and hold commercial and industrial deals and consumers to get acquainted with all what is new in this regard. The Minister of Electricity began a set of special steps for the holy month of Ramadan and the period of school exams in order to secure the supply of electrical power. The programs of rationing applied and directed the maintenance workshops around the clock in order to repair any malfunction to the network to ensure the reliability, reliability sorry, of the power supply. It is to be noted that the Ministry of Electricity recently received a second bath of four mobile stations, each with 20 megawatt ability at a cost of 4 million euros as a part of its plan to secure the supplies of electrical sector by signing, signing several contracts with friendly countries. Nikkei index fell in early trading in Tokyo securities today. According to Reuters, Nikkei fell 0.44% to reach 20,398.76 points, while the broader topics dropped 0.56% to reach 1,664.45 points. And now over to some main currencies exchange rates according to the Bulletin of the Central Bank of Syria. Ladies and gentlemen, this was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.